Hello friends, my name is Abhinay Anand and we are going to discuss bow and axle series. As we all know, this is a very basic and important topic in geology. There are many questions asked in our semester exam and many competitive exams like GSI, GET, NET, GRF on the basis of bow and axle series. Basically, bow and axle series is a crystallization process of a basaltic or we can say silica rich melt with the falling temperature. So this is the uh, basic uh, diagram of uh, Bowman reaction series which shows uh, the discontinuous and continuous reaction series of Bowman reaction series. Uh, it is uh, found by the NL Bowman and he discovered two uh, reaction series and uh, it is known as a discontinuous and a continuous reaction series. So in this diagram we can clearly see that the first mineral is crystallized is all win in discontinuous reaction series. The first mineral is crystallized is all win then it will uh, give rise to pyroxene then amphibole and followed by the biotide. And in continuous reaction series calcium rich plagioclase that is anorthite to the sodium rich plagioclase that is albite. And these two uh, reaction series merge and give rise to potassium feldspar and muscovite and then quartz. So the starting uh, temperature, the first cooling and or we can say crystallizing temperature is 1400 degrees Celsius. As we go down uh, from 1400 degrees Celsius, the mineral start crystallizing. And the lowest temperature shown here is 650 degrees Celsius. Now the question is, why we need to study the Bowen reaction series? What are the importance? and how uh, this reaction is related to crystallization process or does it, does it affect on crystal texture of a rock, color of a rock and the most important question is why olivine crystallize first? Why not pyroxene crystallize first? And what is the difference between discontinuous series and continuous series? So these are the few questions uh, which often ask in exam. So coming to next slide, as I ask you a few questions, these are the questions you can read it out. And coming to the next slide, this is uh, the again Bowman reaction series. The reaction is same, the only nomenclature is different. Like uh, it uh, subdivided the pyroxene into orthopyroxene and kalinopyroxene, which is also known as Mg pyroxene and MgCO pyroxene. Similarly, in a continuous reaction series, Ca plagioclase, CaNa plagioclase, that is calcic plagioclase, calcic alkali plagioclase. Uh, if you uh, notice, like Ca, the first mineral is crystallized in continuous reaction series is a Ca plagioclase, that is anorthite. As we go down with the decreasing temperature, the Na content is increases and the Ca content is decreases. So as we go down from anorthite to albite, the albite is a Na rich plagioclase. Okay, and the in olivine, it uh, olivine, then orthopyroxene, then kalanopyroxene, then amphibole, then biotite. biotite. So this is the uh, only different uh, type of diagram. The reaction is so same. Coming to the next slide. Look in this uh, slide. Along with the mineral name, there is a also column which shows the structural type in which uh, silicate structure the particular mineral is crystallized. You must know about the silicate structure. If you don't know, so don't worry about that. I will going to explain silicate structure in my coming videos. So basically, all mineral is crystallized as a isolated as O4 group that is. Uh, isolated tetrahedra and it is also known as an isosilicate and the pyroxene is single chain that is inosilicate it forms single chain then double chain then biotide is a seed silicate similarly plagioclasteris is crystallized as a framework silicate and so as muscovite and quartz and zeolite is on the framework silicate here one more mineral is added zeolite after the quartz the zeolite is one then the hydrothermal minerals 
one more important thing is it is not necessary in a particular crystallization series this all mineral will form it will depend on the residual melt concentration and the silica silica concentration of the melt so uh, it could be a stop uh, at any stage if the residual melt is not allowed to form the next mineral it will uh, be stopped at any particular temperature so this is the basic uh, arrangement of uh, SiO4 the, uh, the Si is in the center and uh, it is surrounded by the four O2 ions that's why it is uh, the SiO4 group isolated and uh, the ratio of uh, Si and 2 O2 is Si4 and O2 is 1 is to 4 the, uh, the ratio is the main uh, thing uh, how they are different in uh, structure and type so these are the basic uh, arrangement of uh, silicate and oxygen uh, with respect to the structural type you can have a look uh, if you not able to understand so don't worry I will explain later on so coming to the next slide this is the same as the previous the only uh, I have added the SIO O ratio that is for uh, sorry this is not ionosilicate this is a nesosilicate so for all win it is a nesosilicate the ratio is 1 is to 4 it should be 1 is to 4 that is SiO4 so I have uh, missed with this this is the wrong information so I like to correct here this is a nesosilicate and SiO is uh, 1 is to 4 ratio then comes to mg pyroxene it is a single chain of ionosilicate this is the uh, ionosilicate ionosilicate has a two uh, chain that is single chain and double chain the only the ratio of si and o is changes on the basis of we define the silicate structure now comes uh, how they are different discontinuous reaction and a continuous reaction why we are calling uh, this reaction a discontinuous and a continuous reaction so again coming to this particular diagram the first mineral is crystallized only I ask you why all win crystallize first why not pyroxene so I gave you all I already gave you the answer so the answer is because all win has the simplest silicate structure that is isolated tetrahedra SiO4 group that's why olivine is crystallized first as we go down with the falling temperature the structural complexity is increases the silicate structural complexity is increases as we go down so you got your answer olivine has the simplest silicate structure that's why olivine crystallized first now what is the difference between discontinuous and continuous reaction series so in discontinuous reaction series at a particular temperature like 1400 degrees centigrade as we go down from that temperature the first mineral is crystallized olivine then this olivine will react with the residual melt and give rise to the pyroxene then this pyroxene is react with the residual melt and give rise to amphibole and so on the reaction is going on in the so the important thing is here all when reacts with the residual man and it gives rise to pyroxene which is a completely a different mineral it has a different composition optical property and a physical property so in discontinuous reaction series at a particular temperature a different mineral is formed whereas in a continuous reaction series as we go down from anorthite to alvite, the composition is overall composition is same. Only whereas is in continuous reaction series from anorthite to alvite, there is a continuous change in the composition. If you uh, wrote down the formula of anorthite, bitonite, and labradorite, you will observe that 
there is a uh, certain ratio which is decreases and increases uh, as I earlier uh, told you the CA component is uh, decreases and, and is increases the ratio is uh, same the overall composition is same for plagioclase all belongs to the plagioclase but the compositional change variation is a continuous that's why it is called the continuous reaction series so this is the basic difference between continuous and uh, in continu discontinuous reaction series and there are a few more uh, differences in discontinuous and uh, continuous reaction series which is uh, right down uh, here the discontinuous reaction series exhibits incongruent melting and it forms the reaction rib and corona this is a very important uh, question uh, which reaction uh, series form corona and uh, uh, reaction rib so answer is discontinuous reaction series whereas in continuous reaction series it will form zoning and the two uh, adjacent uh, middle in discontinuous series is known as a reaction pair and there is a very important question asked in the interview the, in discontinuous series is there any continuous series yes the answer is yes when we uh, for, uh, divide the olivine when we uh, look into the olivine composition olivine is a group okay olivine is a mineral group in which we have a phosphorite to phyllite the phosphorite is a mg rich olivine and a phyllite is a fe2 rich olivine so similarly like in uh, plagioclase series the same happens in olivine series from phosphorite to phyllite there is a continuous change in the mineral composition how MD, mg2 is replaced by the fe2 and this is the continuous reaction so this is uh, the answer yes we have a continuous reaction series within the discontinuous reaction series now there are a few properties which is increases with decreasing temperature as we go down the series the silica content is increases the mineral structural complexity as i explained you is also increases the amount of na and k is also increases the mineral stability is also increases this is a very co uh, common question asked in competitive exam uh, you have uh, given a pore sample mineral lamp, like uh, olivine pyroxene biotide and quartz and they ask which mineral is more stable the, sim uh, the simple uh, answer is quartz because it's come later on and it, it has a more complex uh, structural type that's why it is more strong and viscosity of melt is also increases now the important thing is how this uh, Bowman reaction series is related to igneous uh, rock type and their texture and color this will uh, I will going to explain in my coming videos because it's uh, going to longer so I don't want to bore you if you people like this video please uh, like and share it and subscribe my channel thank you very much for watching this video